The Tropic Pianist Gamers Podcast, Episode 1, World Mental Health Day and Generalised Anxiety Disorder. My book, Tales of an Anxiety Warrior, is my memoirs of living with a severe anxiety disorder and then how I overcame it without professional help. That book begins with the chapter, Racism in Reception. I experienced bullying from the age of four just for being half Chinese. Back then, my mum told me just to ignore it, and it wasn't too hard to do. But as I got older and travelled through primary school and secondary school, the bullying just got worse and worse, and I was bullied all the way up until 2019. But this episode is not to do with bullying, or the implications of bullying, or the long-term effects that bullying can have. Today is about World Mental Health Day. Today is a special day, not just for me and my podcast, but also for the authors of Scene 2, where 15 women tell their stories of adversity, and I myself can't wait to read it. So congratulations to the authors for today, and I wish you all the best. I'm connected to Scene 2, because a year ago today, I was the first chapter in the book called Scene, the original Scene, which was released for World Mental Health Day in 2021. That's not where my writing started though. On World Mental Health Day 2020, I shared my first blog that I ever wrote. It was a guest spot blog and it appeared on Resilience Voyages website and told a brief summary of my story of living with a severe anxiety disorder. Until then, I thought no one wanted to listen, no one cared. Bullying told me that no one cared. I was a nobody, I was invisible. And I crashed completely in 2019 and nearly lost everything. But 2020, when lockdown happened, a new world opened up. Being a gamer, I was no stranger to the online world. But the online world didn't teach me what networking was. Even though I co-founded Nintendo North Wales with my husband in 2012, and spent the first year being too shy and anxious to promote myself or talk about it to anyone, We would literally rely on the street pass function on the 3DS for meeting people and our message bubble would have the group name in it and we hoped that people would find us sort of by accident. And people did find us eventually. Although things only really kicked off in September 2013 after we realised that Manchester had an equivalent group and we paid them a visit and, and those people just happened to be the founders of the main hub, which became Street Pass UK, which is now known as Nintendo Players UK. And I built up slowly over time, despite being anxious and stressy about everything. I was known for creating structure within my community. Every event was carefully planned, down to last detail, and people knew what to expect, so they came back because they knew what to expect, and they knew what I was like. And... It became a safe space for people to congregate and it was a brilliant community. It even helped other people come out of their shells from being really shy and anxious to finding their own confidence. Meanwhile, I was in the background, still anxious, still shy, still feeling like a nobody. But I always seemed to survive the events. I got used to calling names for tournaments. I got used to doing the raffle. But it literally took me until lockdown to find my confidence as an adult gamer because all the while then I had a second secret profile on Facebook to manage my group because I was that afraid of being judged for being a gamer. I was afraid to show the gamer me to my supposed real friends and I was afraid to show the real me to my gaming friends so I kept them very separate and it was like living a double life although I didn't think anything of it at the time. It took me until September 2020 to finally find the confidence and admit to the public that I was an adult gamer, an adult girl gamer, and I was fine with that. September 2020 was the turning point for a lot of things. Now, obviously, September 2020 was sort of the end of the first lockdown, just before we headed into another major lockdown. March 2020, as everyone knows, was the first national lockdown. Everything went online, but the week before, I decided to become a Tropic Ambassador. If I'd have never become a Tropic Ambassador, I wouldn't have found the windows of opportunity to get to where I am today. I'd actually been a piano tutor since 2016, after walking out of a job where I was bullied and my anxiety was used against me. 
It was the only job I've ever declared my anxiety disorder on the application form. In the job interview, they said they support me. And when I took on the job and was on probation for three months, they used it against me at every opportunity. They extended my probation and that was the point at which I resigned. Except I tried to resign and the manager walked out the day before I was due to leave. So I ended up getting persuaded to stay on, bullied even more intensely for two weeks and then ended up walking out to the words of F you by one of my admin people. That was my final straw. I walked out feeling like a complete loser because one of the things he'd said to me was I was a loser because I was a gamer because he found out I was a gamer due to me putting on an event using the venue. He said I was a loser and I was already in a low mental place then and I thought I truly was a loser. So we moved house at the end of the year and I finally got the space to have my piano in my house so I actually have my childhood piano from my parents house my dad got it sorted so that it could come to me and it arrived with me in January 2016 so in February 2016 I decided I had nothing else left I could become a piano teacher growth was extremely slow because I was too shy and anxious to get myself out there and promote myself I relied on putting posters quietly in village halls and post offices and stuff and relied on word of mouth but word of mouth assumed that I got people on board in the first place and because they were minimal minimal people got through and that carried on right up until 2018 or 19 and I was doing okay around 2019 except mentally I wasn't everything was kind of going down the pan because I was sleep deprived with the toddler by then I'd had my baby in 2017 Sleep deprivation doesn't suit me at all. I didn't know what to expect as a new mum and it hit me like a ton of bricks. What I later learnt was a good night's sleep is the key to keeping stable. 100% you need a good night's sleep and I swear by that even now. But it was one fateful day in 2019 that I ended up in hospital because I'd been trying to survive off sugar just to stay awake because I wasn't allowed caffeine due to health issues obviously I learned from that point onwards that you can't sustain your body on sugar and I ended up in hospital in the last quarter of 2019 I even apologised to my piano students that day for inconveniencing them because I'd ended up in hospital that's how bad a place I was mentally I was a people pleaser I was a perfectionist and I was nervous about failing at everything And it was at that point in life I thought I'd failed at life. I wasn't quite suicidal, but I thought that there was no way out and I was stuck like that forever. An anxious, fat mess. The month after the hospital debacle, where I discharged myself and refused to have my gallbladder out, Ring Fit came out. As an adult gamer who specialised in Nintendo, it was an automatic pre-order to get Ring Fit Adventure, but I never imagined the long-term positive impact it could have on my life. It literally changed my life. So in October 2019, I lost about two stone and finally started to get some kind of slight body confidence, but I was still a long way off mentally. Fast forward to March 2020 and lockdown was looming. I joined Tropic. And if I hadn't have joined Tropic, I would have still been the shy piano teacher who didn't know how to network or had never heard of self-development. Tropic opened all those windows. I'd actually started networking in October 2019, but I didn't know how to talk to people back then. I was still very shy and quiet. March 2020, I finally had something to talk about. A lot of people were anti-MLM, multi-level marketing, which is what Tropic can be seen as. But I saw opportunity to have conversations. People didn't have to like what I was selling, but I had something to talk about. I had a story to tell. That said, it was a very rocky start with Tropic. I joined out of desperation because I thought I was gonna lose my piano business because of lockdown. Over on Anglesey, which is where I'm based, internet isn't a given. Not everyone had a decent internet connection. Not everyone had a decent piano to practice on at home. People were missing out on the opportunity, so a lot of people quit overnight with lockdown looming. Some said see you after lockdown, some said see you altogether, and I had to just deal with it. 
I actually used a giant Jenga tower to prop my iPad up originally and just got on the call. I tried the various camera angles the first week of lockdown, but I quickly got overwhelmed and decided one camera, overall view, done. All the other people needed was a decent internet connection, keyboards were fine, pianos were fine, whatever they had, I'd work with it. Having perfect pitch gave me that advantage, so I was slowly getting there, but I was still in a very bad place mindset wise. By June 2020, I'd just had a breakdown because I was trying to run a gaming tournament and people had taken their angers out on me and I took it personally and got defensive. It was at that point I basically had a breakdown and looked at myself and was like, I obviously need to sort myself out, I can't keep living like this. I'm getting burnout quite often, which I didn't realise was burnout until I looked back after doing the self-development. I had to sort myself out and fast. So I tapped into the networks at that point because I'd been attending network events online but not really known what to do or what to say. So I'd been saying I was a Tropic Ambassador and I played the piano. People hadn't heard me play the piano. I was actually afraid to play the piano in public. So June 2020, things started turning around and I was like, right, I can go live. I can do things with tropic i wasn't afraid to take pictures of myself i had a bit of body confidence back and over the summer summer 2020 i was asked by a lady who runs a website called resilience voyage to write my story by writing my story she meant oh would eight thousand words do and i was thinking back then that's a very long story but once I got writing, I couldn't stop. And I ended at eight and a half thousand words and submitted it. And she's like, oh, don't worry if it's a bit over, it's fine. She put it out there. But it took me a while because I was afraid to chase people up. So I just left it with her. And then about August time, I was like, you know that blog I wrote? When's it getting published? And she's like, oh, I can publish it when you like. So she published it in the August. And I didn't share it. I only put my first name, Jen, and then my initial G and left it like that because I was afraid of the wrong people finding it. I was still absolutely terrified of being judged at that point, but I wanted to get my story out there because that was the first person who'd actually wanted to listen to my story. And that made all the difference. So I wrote my 8,000 words and I only shared it to my personal profile for World Mental Health Day in 2020. September 2020 was when I decided to become the Tropic Pianist Gamer. September 2020, I was voted in as head of Nintendo Players UK. And that was the point at which I publicly admitted that I was an adult girl gamer and I was okay with it. So, Tropic Pianist Gamer, the three passions were complete. People asked me, how on earth do they work together? And I didn't really know. People would say, own your niche, that's fine. Find your niche, it can be one thing. And I struggled with that. I'm not just one thing. I like Tropic, I like Piano, I like Gaming. How do I niche down on that? Oh, you'll just have to find your own way, they said. So, it took about a year, and then June 2021, I found my branding. So I developed my logo and my templates for Canva after winning two workshops, a workshop in branding and a workshop in how to use Canva. So they were perfectly timed and by the end of June 2021 I had my full branding clarity. Earlier that year in 2021 I'd also opened my Galaxy themed studio which I teach piano from now. It's Galaxy themed because it has purple skirting boards, a silvery grey wall and the feature wall is Galaxy blue and purple themed with twinkles and it suits me perfectly as my brand. And that wallpaper is the basis for all of my background templates and my notebooks that I publish on Amazon. My journey with visibility actually started in February 2021. I'd met a lady called Kat Massey just before Christmas as I helped her with her YouTube graphics. And I remembered her from there and she was advertising a visibility road trip, a virtual visibility road trip. And it sounded right up my street, so I signed up for it. Next thing I know, we've had a month. I've done a month of a live challenge on Instagram. Public lives, five minutes a day. Loved it. And I joined her academy since then, and I've been a member ever since. It was through her academy that I got the opportunity to be one of the authors in the original scene book. 
It was around summer 2021 and Kat announced that she was doing the project. I was the first person to respond, the first person to pay. Therefore, I was chapter one. My chapter was called When I Was Scared of People and was the angle of my story of being the piano tutor who was scared of people. My anxiety was so bad that I wouldn't follow up calls. I wouldn't answer calls sometimes and I'd regularly get myself in twists over any conflict or issues that happened. I was too scared to talk to the parents. It, the list went on and it wasn't a good place to be. But of course, in the interest of scene one, that was my tale of adversity. Going from the piano teacher who was scared of people to the confident Tropic Pianist gamer. Because at the point of which it released in October 2021, I'd got my brand clarity and I'd got my purpose and my passion down to a T. And that book sealed the deal. But what many people didn't realise was that book didn't come first. In the summer of 2021, I'd written an entire blog called Tales of an Anxiety Warrior, where I'd just put my story as I found it. When I met people over the summer, they'd fill in gaps of my memories that I'd forgotten about and I'd add them to my blog. So what I ended up with was a 79,000 word blog, subcategorised according to what people wanted to read about. So lockdown, friendships, relationships, religion. Every, every topic was covered, even scaring myself into driving. There was also a post about burnout and a post about my lockdown story. So the chapter in scene one was essentially my lockdown story, but told from the pianist angle. When I put my chapter in that book, I already had the idea that I wanted to write my own book because I got the blog. It was enough words to make into a book. It seemed a natural follow up from that. So I already had my sights on a book before scene one. But I thought scene one would give me the experience and the step up into that world of being an author. And it truly did. Because the publisher, Team Author UK, that published scene one was the publisher that helped me with my own book, Tales of an Anxiety Warrior. So for World Mental Health Day in 2021, scene one was launched. I started my own book project the first working day of 2022. We were just approaching the year of the tiger, of which I'm a tiger, and it was one of my ultimate goals to publish my own book. So here we were, 2022, this was the year. I started working on it straight away and I did it in double quick time because the publisher wasn't expecting me to be done until the end of February but I submitted the first full draft by mid-February and we would go. They warned me that my date for World Mental Health Week in mid-May was going to be a bit tight but we did it with time to spare. It came out on the 15th of May at the end of World Mental Health Week and I was so glad to get it out there. People were wanting to hear my story and now they could have it at their fingertips. It appeared on paperback 15th of May, Kindle followed on 27th of May, and then summer 22, I decided to narrate my own Audible book, which is where the sound technology came in. So as soon as I started my Audible project, I decided I want to launch my own podcast. So after it took me the whole summer, but Audible also got approved on the first attempt of submission, I knew that podcast was my natural next step. So releasing on World Mental Health Day this year is my podcast. So my timeline goes, World Mental Health Day 2020, guest blog, World Mental Health Day 2021, scene one, World Mental Health Day 2022, the Tropic Pianist Gamers podcast. That was episode one. I aim to launch my podcast episodes once a month at roughly the same time every month. I hope to keep them all to under half an hour so they're in manageable chunks for you to listen to. Please give me a subscribe or follow. Next month I'm hoping to talk about Curse's look and mindset, so more on that next month. Of course if you'd like to recommend a topic that you'd like me to talk about feel free to get in touch. You can find me on most platforms at Tropic Pianist Gamer and my website is tropicpianistgamer.co.uk I'd love to hear from you. But for now, see you next month.